Stu Armstrong with interviews that pack a punch. Hi and welcome to Radio Northumberland. My name's Stu Armstrong and this is the Stu Armstrong Interviews. Where on each show, I interview someone from the world of combat sports, and one thing's for sure, my interviews will always pack a punch. My, do- my background, as you may know, is that of the author of the Diaries of a Dorman series of books and the patron of the charity Choose Lives Not Knives. My guest this week is former Cruiserweight Champion of the World and current uh, BKB World Champion, all the way from the USA, it's Bobby Gunn. Hi, Bobby. I'm doing real good, Stu, and thank you for having me on to your show, you're a total class act, and everything you're doing for all the combat sports is amazing. Thank, that's great of you to say. It's lovely to have you on as well. Um, I know we've we've been talking. Uh, we do talk quite a bit uh, through Twitter and things like that. It's nice to actually get the chance to speak to you properly. Thank you. Um, I've got a couple of hellos that I've been forced to say. First of all, um, first of all, um, uh, a good friend of mine, Joe Smith Brown, aka Joe B. Bad. He wanted us to uh, yeah. pass on. To pass on his best wishes, uh, as did Thank Joe's wife. Joe's a good man. I love Joe. He is a good friend of mine, um, and also Steve Miller as well. He asked us to pass on his best. Oh, as well. uh, Big Miller, he's my buddy. Yep, <laughs> yeah, he's my buddy. Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, he's crackers, but he's great. He's one of my friends as well. So, Bobby, you, currently um, your B- BKB World Champion, um, sanctioned by Scott Burt from the BKB Hall of Fame. Um, the first world champion since uh, John L. Sullivan over 100 years ago. That's quite an achievement. How, how does that feel? Well, it was amazing. Um, a lot of people, you got a few minutes, I'll explain you a few things. Um, yeah, I'll yeah, how great. this all started. Um, understand something. Um, all my life, I fought underground bare knuckle fights. In, in America, they have this called the underground circuit. Yeah. It's underground. And for 11 years, I was champion over here. And I always fought, like, I fought regular world championship fights. I fought the best fighters in the world. You know what I mean? And I, I always maintained my bare knuckle world too. Yeah. At the same time. And 2011, um, Dave Feldman, the president of BTF, and myself, we, you know, we said, listen, there's a, the Navajo Boxing Commission in Scottsdale, Arizona. They sanctioned World Championship fights there and make a full box all the time. They're willing to make a bold move here and yeah. let's make this a regular championship fight. Yeah. I said, well, I said, no, my, how's a championship fight? Just a, it, it, you fight a fighter. Now, understand something. At the time, Richard Stewart I fought, who's also a notorious underground fighter. Yeah. And this is going back about five years now. You have to understand. Richard Stewart was fighting for all the time. His record was like 14 and 8. You know, he was a journeyman gatekeeper fighter, fought Randy Cash, who fought for the world title. And he said, a fighter fighter called Richard Stewart. Yeah. I said, okay. He goes in to fight. Um, the great historian, God rest his soul, Burt Randolph Sugar, which you, you hear boxing, anybody knows who that is. You know, yeah. God rest his yeah. guy yeah. two years ago. He, um, he called me on the phone and he said to me, you understand that this is amazing what happened. I said, I really don't know. He says it's, it's the first sanctioned event that's ever been done. And if by rights, if you win this fight and you're victorious, you win the linear bare knuckle headway championship. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I, I, at the time, I didn't really pay much attention to it. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. And then, leading up to the fight about a week, ESPN, Michael Woods, called me up on the phone and we did an interview. Yeah. And then, Stu, it blew open. Crazy. There was over 5,000 attendants at this event at the Fort McDowell Casino. Yeah, wow. And people that couldn't get in were standing outside the park lot, still watching the, like a, a drive-in movie theater, a big screen, a park yeah. lot. <laughs> and, and, um, and I went in at a time, at a time, like I said, at a time where your still was fighting, it was fresh. And um, I stopped them and, you know, pretty... Good fight, you know, rebel, uh, it was a good fight for me. With no effort, I, I thank the good Lord. I had a good win. Yeah. And I stopped him. It was, a, and, it was um, a third round knockout, I think, with Richard, wasn't it? 
Oh, pardon me? Uh, you, you beat Richard on a um, on a third round knockout? Third round, correct, yeah. correct, yeah. correct. And, um, uh, anyway, so we knocked him out, and um, I goes back to the room, and I'm just thinking here, you know, thinking, I can't believe this. And um, Bert Randolph Sugar called me, and he said, congratulations, now, you're going to cause a lot of problems. I said, how do you mean, sir? You're going to get a lot of haters, and the boxing world is going to come against you. Yeah. And they don't want you doing this. And I'll tell you what, Stu. God rest his soul. Was he ever right? Yeah. Stu, I fought the attorney general, the government. You have no idea what we went through, sir, to get the knuckle box in a hard I fought. Yeah. To get it going now. Now we've got two major states in America, which I cannot mention yet. It'll be revealed probably in the next couple of weeks. Fantastic. That stand behind us 100% to give the stamp of legit- legitimacy and to give us full approval to promote and do regular medical boxing. And it's been enough to, uh, believe me, the hardest fight I had to do wasn't fighting, it's fighting politics, like attorney, you know, hiring attorneys. People don't understand how hard I did this. Yeah. You know what I mean? How hard we, we pushed to do this. And, and what happened is that. It's good that you see other people come up and do things and do this and that. But it isn't good when they try to tear down another person all the time. Yeah, after, and, after all the hard work's been put in. You know, and, 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 and the truth is, like, in life, you can't be... I can't change history. I, I can't change the times, too. I can't change an old saying... But who's a part of our BKF team, Big Joe McEwen, Big Joe Mackey. He's yeah. one of the smartest I've ever met. He says, documentation beats conversation. <laughs> and I can't help it that we was the first to do this, to make better knuckle mainstream. Yeah. People get mad about it, but it was the truth. And I shook my ground as a gentleman, too, and I wanted to take it to the mainstream level and thank the good Lord. All the hard work, all the blood, sweat, and you know, all the, all the team behind it, working hard, one and night attorneys, all the team members, investing a lot of money into this, making it to where it is today. We can utterly say, now we are legitimized. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I mean, uh, the Richard Stewart fight, uh, the 5th of August, 2011, um, less than four months later, you went on to defend your title against Ernest Jones, um, and you won in just under nine minutes. The rest sort of thing, that, that's history now. How many title defences yeah. have you had since then, Bobby? Well, um, since I fought Richard Stewart in the sanction fight, I've had around one, two, around eight or nine yeah. bare knuckle fights. Yeah. You know, you know. Okay, here's a problem I have, and, and I want to explain to a lot of people out there, and they, they say this and say that. It's hard for a former world boxing champion to still compete in boxing and have these bare knuckle fights because, I'll be honest with you, the mother round fights are not right. They're not legal, you understand? Yeah. And nobody yeah. wants to get in trouble. And they, oh, he's not fighting. Well, what am I going to do? Sound like a sign, like an idiot? Oh, I just fought last night. I mean, just because I don't. Announce them all the time. I, I you know, if you don't say that, I'm not in fights. Yeah. And, you know, and only, the only reason I fight is, is, is if it makes money. If it don't make money, it don't make sense. Exactly. And, and you know, I mean, I, if you look at my history, and I mean this, um, I don't call anybody out that doesn't start with me first. Yeah. And, and, and I don't want to do that. And, 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 and I want to, and I want to clear something real quick here. I, if you look at my video with James McCorry, yeah, right when I when I challenged the fight, which he's my friend, and I and I, but I never said nothing mean. All that I said was to at the time I was on Facebook, which I don't go near it. I can't even bother now. But I was looking at it, and all these people were saying this and that. They're all behind the coin. All that I said was, if, if, if you know, it's, here's the deal. If all these people think so highly of these fighters, why don't they back these fighters up financially? And then they'll turn around and say, oh, that's too much money. Well, should these young men go get their head punched in for no money? Don't these young men have a family, have it's... wives, have girlfriends, have a wee kids to go back to? Yeah. Every time, Stu, you fight, you're putting your life on the line. You are, and, most definitely. 
you know, and, and here's the mission. Everything that Bobby Gunn does is for the future of bare knuckle boxing. Yeah. You know what I mean? If if I if if these fighters fight for nothing, they're always gonna fight for nothing. Stu, think about this. In eighteen ninety four, James Jane Corbin and John O'Sullivan, they were fighting for fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars. That's over a hundred years ago. That's a huge, huge amount of money sort of now, but even back but then, then. Back it's, then, it's you just, know what I mean? Exactly, it's, back it's then. Huge, and, and this is bare knuckle fights. These, these young men should not be, they shouldn't go in there and fight for peanuts and, yeah. and put their life on the line because it's not right for them, Stu, because one punch can change a man the rest of his life. Massively, massively. I mean, when it comes to that sort of thing, I mean, my sort of way of thinking, it's all about sort of bringing home the, the bread for your family sort of thing. And I remember that night with the video with James, and I remember sort of James' reply. I am, I'm good friends with James as well. I don't live far away from him. You're a gentleman. And I, I, I like is, James a lot, my yeah. friend. Well, I remember him saying, if I had 50,000, I would put it in a trust fund for my kids and my nephews. And I thought, you know, that's the case. But, but 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 here here's where that was going to. It wasn't directed to James. It was directed to all the naysayers and the people that all oh, McCoy will destroy you. McCoy will this to you. Fight McCoy. Fight McCoy. Well, you know, here's the bottom line. Again, okay, yep. I'll fight him. Yeah. Instead of praying him up, back up your man. Sue, let me ask you a question. If I feel so good in you, and I'm and I'm and I'm, and I'm challenged, I'm getting on people's pages. I'm telling them off. I'm calling them names. And I tell them to fight you. You're the man. You're the man. Well, Stu, so why don't I say, wait a minute, okay, how much does Stu need to fight? He needs a hundred or fifty grand. Okay, let's get 12, 15 of us together. Put it up, a couple grand a piece. If we believe in you so much, Stu, we should do that, no problem. Yeah. The truth is, none of these people really believe in these boys. They just want to go on and talk through their ass. God forgive me for swearing. Yeah. And the truth is, here's how I look at it. All those guys that say the bad things and they, and, 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 and they challenge the challenges, if James McCoy was to ask them, would they give him a, a help or he need help, they wouldn't even return the message to him. So no, I no, come to the conclusion. Not a true words being said, Bobby. You know, and, 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 I, and I mean this. And, 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 and Sue, I know what it is to be in the gutter. No. I've, I've, I mean this, pal. I'm telling you. I, Sue, I've come from nothing, sir. Yeah. I come from nothing. I had a hard life still. And the Lord blessed me. And I fought all my life. I took abuse. And people told me I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. And they abused me and they abused me. And my mom died of cancer when I was only 19 years old. And I want to tell you something. Yeah. Social media creates a lot of people that don't have a heart. A lot of trolls out there. It and does. They went it to the really point does. On, 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 on boxing websites too. You know, I've been fighting for titles and you know, anyway, there'll be comments. And people went to the point and was calling my poor dead mother, Stu. Well, you know what I mean, my pal? So that's anymore, disgusting. It, it, you know, anymore, I look at it this way here. Um, talk is cheap. That is exactly the price tag on it. Zero. Yeah. It means nothing. Until you can say it to a man's face, to his face, face to face, it means nothing. And that's how I go. People say, oh, you got a bad, a lot of bad fans in the U.K., no, when I'm in UK, I love UK and I love the people there. They treat me as the best. They love me and I love them. Yeah. It's only the deadbeats that got something to say on Facebook. And truthfully, Stu, if you was Mike Tyson or Manny Paxson, they would, they would have something to say. It ain't just Bobby Gunn. You know what I mean, Stu? It's just they always going to have something to say. So anymore, I pay no attention. Yeah. I look past them. And well. a lot of these fighters coming up today, they're being influenced by these people and this is what I feel sorry for them because they're being led astray. They're not they're not trying to fight their way up, earn their way up the right way. Yeah. Social media is creating clowns. It it's and an it's evil thing. Circus. I mean there's a phrase that we use in the UK, I don't know if you've got it uh, over in the States, of uh, fa a Facebook boxer. Um these people that they get a photograph with a pair of boxing gloves on. Uh, they've agreed to 25 fights. They've never showed up in a single one. Facebook boxer, that's what we call them. I forgot for the, you, you, you know, you, it's the same. You know, you know, Sue, here, here's the situation. 
all fighters are the same. Put them in a bag and shake them up. They're all the same. Yeah. But, but you're forgetting the point of one thing. You, in the professional boxing world, when you turn pro, you're fighting four-round fights. Yeah. Then you move up to a six-round fight. Mm-hmm. And then you move up to an eight-round fight, and then you're a 10-round main event. And then your next stage is worse, too. It's a world title of 12-round fight. Yeah. A lot of these bare-knuckle fighters do. They have one, two, three fights, and they're talking like they're the heavyweight champ of the world. Massively. And, you know, and the truth is, my pal, there's a lot of good fighters. A lot of fighters over here, underground fighters in America. Yeah. They don't even open their mouth. Don't even say nothing. Yeah. They would beat a lot of these guys that are raving up and down, saying this, saying that. And the truth is, in order for you to, to get somewhere, you really got to prove yourself. Exactly. And I think I think you need to do that with anything in life, but I think especially in, in the boxing world, in the bare knuckle world. Well, you know, you know what it is, too? Under the BKF, the Bare Knuckle Boxing Federation, is monitored by Scott Burke, who is the president of the, the International Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame. That's right. Who, mind you, who, mind you, was giving authority by who? Burt Randolph Sugar. Yeah. If you know better, it's like, it's like the Alpha, it's like, it's like the Queen Knighting you, okay? I mean, in the fight world, that's what it's like. And, um, <laughs> and, and in order to fight for the bare knuckle heavyweight title, a gym and sanctioned fight, the opponent must be qualified by a ratings chairman or the organization and, and ultimately to give, yep. you know, go ahead by Scott Bird, the president. And if, and if he qualifies and the money's right and he, he qualifies, then the fight will be made. But yeah. Right, right now we're we're in negotiations with two major big players in the in the, in the sports combat world. Yeah. And I'm not a, I can't say their name yet, Stu. But like I said earlier, in the next few weeks will be a major announcement. Yeah. Sounds fantastic. That, that's one of the questions I was going to ask you actually um, about Scott in uh, the BKB Hall of Fame. Um, obviously, it, there's been a recent induction to the to the Ben Uncle Hall of Fame uh, for yourself. Um, and a sort of full sanction of your belt from the Bare Knuckle Hall of Fame. How does that feel? Oh, it's an, it's an honor. I mean, it's going to be great. And plus, my friend Mike Tyson is going to be there. I'll get to see Mike. And then the, the, the world-famous, you know, commentator and, and, and boxing historian, Al Bernstein, is going to be inducted too. And yeah. Mike Tyson will be standing in for the, the legendary Tesla model. It's a, great, it's a great honor that we can, you know, rub apples and talk, fight with some real good people. You know... Stu, in in life, it doesn't matter what people say or, or think, as long as they're decent and they have and they're nice to you. It's only the dirty fool that has something mean to say, horrible to say. You know what I mean? And and, yeah. and, 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 and 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 a lot of people understand. A lot of times you, you read the internet. I have a, a, a social media, you know, team. Yeah. And and, and I get dug, you know, for MMA fight news. Who's got like a million followers? One of the biggest MMA yeah. guys in, in Twitter. I've, I've been talking. I've been talking to Doug quite a lot today. Nice guy. Oh, he's a good guy. I mean, he's a top guy. And 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 you know, and and Chris Seller, he does a, a lot of uh, PR work. And they understand, like a lot of times, if anything, um, a lot of things that said and done isn't me saying that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and I have a professional team, and this, naturally they have to defend me. You know, yeah. they have to stand up for me. It's like anything. You know, I mean. But but me, Bao, how I look at it is that if if you got something to say to me, say it to my face. You know what I mean? It's it's like you know, I, I there's a few fellows that had a lot to say about me, and when they saw me to my face, they were they were nice as could be. So I I don't I can't take people like that serious. Yeah, yeah. Totally agree with us. Um, I mean, it's sort of some of the things that we're talking about there. It's, um, some of the people are quite sort of new to the fight game, maybe haven't proved themselves enough. Um, I was going to ask you uh, about the how you felt about the recent call out by Decker Heggie. Well, Dickie Heggie, um, uh, understand? Um, he, he came over here to America, and he fought a guy. The first guy was the last one replacement, and then he fought the old. I mean, he fought Richard Stewart, hadn't fought in five years. Yeah, that's a fact. The man who was and he never knocked the man out. The man quit from exhaustion, fat, out of shape. And I didn't really take a whole lot of him. 
And I thought Stephen Miller had done the business room. I thought Stephen won a, a decision. You know, I truly really did. I, but, I would I would agree there know, as well, most definitely. You, I mean, that was me. You know, that's just my opinion. See, I don't mean nothing. I just be saying I watched it on on the, on, on the YouTube. But here here's the story, uh, Sue. Um, and this is what people understand. Yeah. Um, what again? Stephen Miller is a friend of mine. He's a class act, and I want to explain what people don't understand behind the scenes. Stephen Miller one night was in Phil the Best. I love him, and he he he, he, went, he, got, he said a few things in Twitter. Yep. And my team retaliated, but that fire was put out quick because why, Stu? We are friends, and we respect each other. You understand? Yeah. And we respect him. He's my friend. And Stephen's a class act, and he knows he's got he's, he's built himself up. He's trying to make a name. He, he's got a, a long way to go, and he's doing good. Now, yeah. let's go back to Vicky Hagee. Vicky Hagee called my phone. He, he reached out to my boy, which I have the message says, yep. and he reached out and he said, I think that's terrible. Stephen Miller calling you out. Um, we're just guys trying to build ourselves up. Um, I'm not. I'm not really a good fighter. I have no boxing experience, but I'm. Uh, I just want to fight, and but but I know we got a long way to go. I said, well, I said, you know, look at you. I said, it'll work itself out. And I'm. Uh, and then he asked me if he could borrow some money off me. Mm. And I said, be honest with you, pal. I got a family, and I'm trying the best I can do. Yeah. And then he asked me if, if if I could get a sponsorship to bring him to America. Now. But you have to understand something. I'm friends with Joe Brown. Yeah. Ultimately, okay? And, 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 and Joe Brown had a major fight set up for him, and he did not show up. He chose not to go to it. Yeah. So, therefore, you have to have a little loyalty. You understand? And, and, and I didn't sit well with like, listen, Decker, um, I'm friends with Joe Brown. I wish you the best, best luck here. Yeah. Well, three, two weeks go by, and then he puts a bunch of garbage. The garbage that he put up wasn't the same man that talked to me on the phone, Stu. Yeah. You know what I'm saying to myself? So, so at the end of the day, um, he could talk all he wants, and he could say all that he wants. Yeah. I forgive, but I won't forget. There will come a time in life where you bump into each other. So yeah. when he sees me face to face, I'll see what's on his mind. But yeah. until then, I don't put any weight in people like that because I can't take them serious because all they're doing is grasping for straws, trying to make a name for themselves, trying to be the man, but they really can't beat the man, and they want to pretend they can, and they want to get sponsorships. That that boy, Stu, all he does, my pal, he asks for people for money on that Internet, sponsorships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, and that. That ain't right, Stu. I mean, Joe was awful good to him, awful decent to him. Joe did a lot of things for him, Stu. Yeah. A lot of people don't know. You know, Joe's a decent, decent man. And he, 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 he is. I'm, I'm good friends with Joe as well, and he is. You know, he did a lot of things for that, for that, for that boy. And, and between me and you, like I said, okay, when these guys were not even thinking about fighting, I was fighting world championship fights. Yeah. Okay. How could these guys even think they could compete with top guys in the world when they're they're having struggles? Yes. Yeah. And and I think one of the best kept secrets in medical boxing in the UK is a fighter by the name of Jay Wan. Yeah. I I don't know Jay personally, uh, but yep. Yeah. And why, why I tell you this, Vicky Hagee had a death struggle with an older gentleman called Bulldog, I believe. That's right, yeah. Uh, and, to, uh, Tony Gawad, uh, the last of Bulldog. And, 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 and believe it or not, that was a death struggle. I think it was a one either way to the end. And, and Jay Wan fought the same person in this and this and, and And the truth is, now, I'm going to tell you something nobody knows about uh, Big Miller's hand was hurt very bad going that fight. Lots of people don't know that. Big Stephen Miller. Yeah. And when he fought Hagee. And and if he wasn't for the hand being hurt, I believe Miller would, 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 could, have, could have pushed more hard behind the shots and, and stopped him. Yeah. But where, where's he going? I wish him the best. I, I really don't have a whole lot to say about him anymore. I just said, um, how can you take anybody serious when they go on like that? Yeah. 
No, what a great... How can you be a legend, Sue? Sue, so how can you be a legend with two or three fights? You, you, I think you, to, to, to have that sort of status, it's something that needs to be earned over a period of a lot of years. And I think it's something that needs to be stored on you by other people. That's it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I mean, and, and, and you see, bare knuckle boxing, Stu, to me, it, it means bare knuckle boxing. It means bare fist fighting. It doesn't yep. mean hand wraps. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the truth is, don't go by Bobby Gunn with Bobby Gunn saying, did John L. Sullivan wear hand wraps? No. Yeah. Did these historic fighters wear hand wraps? No. Now, yes, there is some young, there's some traveler fights, traveler feuds. They fight, and they wear hand wraps, but them fights are more like for family, name, and prestige, and title, and king of the traveler titles. Them yeah. fights are not sanctioned and legitimized by a boxing commission. That's right. And when you take bare knuckle boxing, that's exactly what it means. Stu, let me ask you a question. Uh, hey, Stu, let's I, go play yep. hockey today. Okay, okay, Bobby. And we go outside. Oh, Bobby, where's your skates and your, 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 your hockey stick? Oh, I don't got it. Well, oh, I'm not really playing hockey, then am I, Stu? <laughs> <laughs> very, very true. Very true. But see, I, I, I mean, I'm not being mean. I'm just talking the truth to the gospel truth. Yo, if, yo. if I'm fighting someone and my hands are wrapped like a boxing glove or an MMA glove, well, it's not... Bare knuckle boxing. Yeah. It takes away the purpose. It means you can throw harder, bang harder, and and, 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 and bare knuckle boxing is an art. You pick your shots. It's a chess player. Every shot counts. Body work. It's an artwork. Bang, bang, bang. I'm going to tell you. you don't go above the, the, one, two inches above the eyebrows. You can break your hand. Yeah. You don't go one. You don't go below the bottom lip because you can cut, you can cut your hand on the bottom lip. Yeah. It's every shot is. Precision. Mm. And when these guys wear these wraps, they're throwing wild. And this is something what a lot of these guys do not understand. Yeah. The Bare Knuckle Boxing Federation, BTF, is for athlete fighters, not barroom brawlers that yeah. have a, you know, the, the, I mean, let's be honest, I'm not being mean here. Barroom brawlers, they're, they're, they're main. The main thing in life is have a few pints, throw a few darts, and challenge Mike Tyson on the internet. Them guys, to me, <laughs> mean nothing. Yeah. yeah you know, I've, I've an, been athlete, an athlete, it's true, an athlete that trains hard for a fight, that knows what he's doing, yeah. that's somebody that will make a difference in, in a fight game. Massively. Yeah, massively. Um, in the minute, Bobby, obviously you're still current world champion, um, and you're saying there may be some uh, defenses coming coming along. Um, I know that you were born in the same year as myself, 1973, uh, making you 41 yes. at the moment. Some people consider yep. that to be uh, a little old for a professional fighter. What would you say to this? Oh, well, I would say for the professional fight game. I mean, don't get me wrong. Any more than fighters fighting 35, I mean. 45 to 45 year old, I would say to compete in the, in the top level professional boxing, 100% you're right. Yeah. But right now in bare knuckle boxing, I don't see any top world beaters out there. And yeah. I always had an upper hand on them because of my amateur experience and my professional and proper training. So you get a sense of that all the years fighting, I've been six years old training. Yeah. And, 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 you know, whatever. I had the medical fights. Like all these big killers, he tell me, this guy, you're fighting a Russian over here, you're fighting a German over here. You know, all these big Chinese killers, they don't last two or three minutes. Yeah. And the truth is because they don't have the experience, how to roll, slip, see a shot coming. And that's why I'm saying an athlete fighter is a different fighter than just a would-be tough guy. Yeah, totally. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, um, obviously we're the same age. We're still, uh, we still haven't even reached our prime yet. We're still very young, Bobby. Well, I, I'll tell you what. I, I feel good for two more years, and then I, I promise my family I'm gonna walk away. Yeah. And that's what I promise them. But I, I gotta do it too, also for the sport of bare knuckle boxing. It needs body gun. I'm gonna post some more right now. Body gun, body all bare knuckle boxing, and what I'm doing. And it here's what I want to explain to all the fighters out there. Hear me yeah. out. Bobby Gunn isn't picking up the phone. He's not calling you names. Yeah. Bobby Gunn isn't doing this, doing that. Whatever Bobby Gunn does is to make it better for you in the future of vertical boxing. Yeah. I am demanding and standing my firm for, for the vertical boxing, the fighters, that he pays very well. 
Mm. Now, I hate to say this, if you get the name of an early riser, you can sleep in until dark, can't you, Sue? You know, let's be honest about it. If these fighters get the name, they'll, they'll fight for nothing cheap. Well, then they're never going to get a payday, Sue. You're right. It's going to be one after the other after the other. And that's what it comes down to. So it's all about the fighters. It, it, it's about the fighters, the safety, competitiveness, yeah. um, being fair, no corruption like boxing. I, I took a stand on that. There'll be no corruption. There'll be best man wins. There'll be no, you know what I mean? Uh, like, like over here, we decided we no draws over here. Yeah. You know, if, 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 if the fight's that close, we're going to add on an extra round and determine the fight for the judges. And I, I think that's and, a good idea. You know, it is, and it's going to mean a lot of it. And, and, and also, you have to prove yourself and have a resume. Unfortunately, Stu, in the world we're living in today, anybody can make a Twitter account or a Facebook account, put on a tight T-shirt that says tap out, yeah. and put up a fake resume, call people names and say they're a fighter. You're totally this right. Is the best part of all. But, Stu, this is the best part of all, my child. Guess what? The people that does this, there's fools that interact with them. <laughs> okay? Isn't it? Isn't and support it? them. Okay? And this is what you're dealing with. So there's two fighters, too. Yeah. There's real fighters, and there's the Facebook fantasy fighters. Yeah, most definitely. And there seems to be more and more of those Facebook fighters every day. Uh, so, so, see, you, you, people only hear in, in, in England, you, you see a few guys say this, saying that. But I, I, I've been getting this for 10 years over here in America. There's always a fool, Stu. Yeah. Ha- Stu, how many times have you went to a bar to watch a major fight? And oh, I knocked him out one punch. I beat him. And if well, he was face to face to the the piss were running down the lake. I don't think I've ever been to a fight where somebody hasn't said that, Bobby, to be honest. Well, it, you're doing good. <laughs> it, it, you know, I see a lot over here. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. I don't think I've been to a fight where somebody hasn't done that because every fight I go to, there's always someone there. Oh, I knocked him out, but we did it in the gym. There's no, always no, someone there, too. Someone saying... Every exactly, time. Exactly, my friend. Somebody saying every time, too. Every time. And, 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 and uh, you see, Sue, I, I've said it before one time. A fighter's resume and record, right, is measured by his past, the people that he fought, and his, his accomplishments recognized by other people, not yeah. self-praise yeah. or fantasy posts. A fighter's not recognized by his posts this week on Twitter. I'll fight you, I'll kill you. What does that mean, Tom? That means nothing. Exactly. That means that means you're a fool. I I would be a bit. I mean, don't get me wrong. Have I replied to things that people say? Yes, I have. I have a team of do things. But for me to sit down and tell you I would beat Mike Tyson, that's a fool. I wouldn't beat Mike Tyson, so Yeah. A, a fool would say that. I would never do that. Probably don't earn that right to say that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I I, I know right from wrong, but I know that I I killed myself, my body to be where I'm at today. I fought top fighters alone, fought legends. And I've had countless underground fights. The yeah. blood pouring out of my nose and taste of my own blood. Yes, I earned the right to be where I'm at today. And it's only the grace of God. Yeah. But I'm here to pave the road for all these fighters out there. Yeah. But unfortunately, been. I see a lot of them, too, that ain't going to go anywhere because they're free Madonnas. They're full of themselves. Yeah. I, I was going to ask you as well, Bobby, that... It's leading into this question that when you t- when you take a fight, um, you, you normally look for a purse uh, in the region of fifty thousand dollars. Is that just uh, is is that something more than just the money? Is that to make sure that they're actually serious contenders who can step up to the mark? Well, guys, you're, you're very smart. Yes, so let me explain to you what that means, and this is the truth, my friend. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna explain to you right now. Okay, you put okay, me and you're gonna fight, Sue. Yep. Okay, Bob, we're going to fight. Okay, the whole day for Okay, Stu. Uh, we're going to fight 50000 each man. Okay. So what we're going to do, Stu, to make sure this fight comes true, yep. it's called kicking money. Yeah. i got to put 10000 into Dave Silver, and you got to put 10000 Stu. Yep. Okay. So now that you put your 10000 in, you're, you're definitely going to show up, right, Stu? That means you definitely have to show up, right? I think it is. Okay. Yeah. And yep. now, and now... You're going to fight your ass off because you're not getting a guaranteed payday. You have to win. Yeah. Get your money. Makes sense. 
So that's what that's what it does, my pal. It, if, if it didn't, Stu, I'm going to tell you why it didn't. I can't tell you how many times I wasted months of training for a fool that said he's going to fight and he never even showed up. Yeah. That's it. I mean, it, it's all hey, good. Think about it. Think about it. There's what, what the Dick and Hagee did to Joe Brown. He never showed up. Yeah. I hate to say it. In America, he left a man with a bad, a bad, bad case as well. So that's what I'm saying to you. It, it, you have to put out a little bit, Stu, to, to show your work. Yeah, massively. I mean, it, it's something I've always uh, was going to mention here. I would love to fight you, Bobby, but I'm, I'm worried that I hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll let I'll let you off just this once. <laughs> please, sir, please let me off, pal. I, sir, you're the only man I'm not gonna fight. I give my title to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you up on that, Bobby. <laughs> so, what w- what's a typical day like uh, being Bobby Gunn? I mean, I, I I think it's correct to say you train most days. I train every day in my life. Yeah, I don't take a day off, and I train my boy. My boy took a whole time off. He's um. He was um he's on the feeder right now in five professional fights. He's doing, he's, doing he's, very, fight. he's doing very well. very well. You must be very proud. Oh, he's training with training with the top fighters in the world over here. And um he was actually supposed to fight in Madison Square Garden some all night, but the fight his opponent pulled out. Yeah. And uh, Lou DeBella and a very good friend of mine, uh, a fighter that fought um, uh, Billy Joe Sanders, uh, uh, his name is um, yeah. Spike Sullivan. He's fighting in the more like the main event there in the garden. Yeah. So we're gonna go down and guest honor. We're going to have supper with the Vander Holyfield, I believe, from all night. Oh, fantastic. And, uh, I'm, yeah, yeah, we're always, in, we're always in the limelight over here. Like, believe it or not, like, people don't understand. Listen, we're all the same. I love the UK, I love England, and I love America. I love all my fans of the world. But because we live, the, that pond actually makes a different world. And a lot of people in the UK don't realize how big the bare knuckle boxing scene is in America right now, how yeah. much is going on yeah, and how popular it is. And it's really steamrolling. But again, we're, we're only about doing top bare knuckle fights and a decent family oriented environment. You know, you can bring the children, the wife, you know, the young children, the women and, and everybody can come and watch the fights. Yeah. We're not looking to have, you know, in other words, to, we're not doing barroom brawls. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say to you. We're, we're doing this the right way. And that's how I believe the sport should go. It it, it really has. Um, I, I think there's something else there. A, a lot of people uh, sort of don't know about you, Bobby. Um, obviously, it, most people know that uh, you, you fought in the pro game um, at Cruiserweight, but I, I think a lot of people don't know just actually what you achieved. I mean, between 2006 and 2009, you, yep. you, you yep. did some amazing things. I, 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 I fought. I fought as a former world cruiserweight champion in 2006, yep. and um, I fought. I fought the best fighters in the world. You know, Macarelli, Thomas Adamak, Glenn Johnson, James Tony, and I won the fight against a very tough bastard named Shannon, the Sandman Lambert, who was 58 pro fights, nine yep. losses for 26 knockouts. I fought him, and then I was involved in one of the most controversial fights. And Teddy Allen said in the modern 20th century, it was the first Shelby Gross fight that I come back. I knocked Gross out, and I won the WBC title. Yeah. And a lot of people understand, I've seen it all, Stu. I, 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 I was a spar partner for 27 world champions. Wow. So, you know, you know, I boxed Nigel then when I was young. We come over to America. Yeah. When, 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 when he fought Doug DeWitt in Atlantic City, I was there. Training yeah. and sparring with him. I know all these guys. And, and what I'm trying to say to you, okay, here's the bottom line, Stu. And I want to, this what, and he, you're a you're a pretty smart boxing guy. You know your game. Let me ask you a question, dude. Yeah. This is the truth. Can can anybody go to the boxing gym, have maybe ten amateur fights? Hear me out. Can those guys qualify to fight the top contenders of the world, the world champion fighters? In no. my own, in my honest Thomas opinion, said. definitely not. Okay, this is what's happening in the bare knuckle world. Yeah. That is actually hurting. The credibility of it, yeah. Because, because here's why. Think of this: too. if everybody could be a world champion, it would be easy, right? Exactly. Be I'd be well, world champion. This is it's not. It's not easy. You know what I mean, Stu? It's hard work. It's life discipline, dedication, sacrifice. You put your body through hell. And here's what happens: all these so-called hard men yeah. calls themselves legends. 
Yeah. What do they really have? Have they had 20 amateur fights? Four or five miracle fights? How can they expect to really compete the top echelon fighters in the world? No. I don't, I don't make these rules, too. I just obey by them. You know, I, mean, I know yeah. right from wrong. When I was young, my dad told me, you got to fight you with three amateurs, fight you with the pros. You yep. get there. And that's how it is. And, and, I, and a lot of these guys, they're challenging. Here's the bottom line, too. They're writing checks they can't cash. Yeah. They can't cash. And, and, and they're not proving themselves the right way. I'll tell you, you need to earn the right of passage. Again, I'm sorry, sir. I lost uh, yeah, you. Yeah, 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 I totally agree with you there. I think they need to really sort of prove themselves and earn the right of passage and go up level by level rather than have a couple of fights and want to go straight on the top. That's it. They need to build themselves up the right way. Yeah. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of good bare knuckle fighters out there in the world. Yeah. There's a lot of good ones, and 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 they got a long way to go. And and and, and there's some top bare knuckle fighters out there in the world right now that are top elite level guys. Yeah. But Again, you don't really hear the top guys going on like some of these fools do on the internet. Yeah, you're right there. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? There's a, there's a boy over here called Danny Batchelor. He's a U.S. Yeah, American I've, champion. I've, I've spoken to Danny online a couple of times. And, and Danny's had 40 professional fights, yeah. ranked in the top 10 level in three different weight divisions. And I've known Danny since the 90s. Yeah. He's been in... I don't know, we probably fought together maybe 30 times and on the round fights. I mean, you know, with each other, you know, they're not against each other, just know yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And, and what I'm saying to you, you'll never see him go on, like, call himself a legend. Yeah. You know what I mean? This and that. Because what it is, too, when, when you're around the real guys in the world, you know what I mean? Like, I know Freddie Roach. Freddie Roach trained me when I was young. He's my friend. Yeah. I know Marvin Hagler. I know Sugar Ray Leonard. I know all these guys. These guys will look at these guys that go on like fools. Exactly what I said, fools. It'd be yeah. embarrassing. That's it. I don't know if you know um, much about... Um, there's a fighter in the UK at the moment. Um, about three weeks ago, he won the B-Bad um, UK heavyweight title, Michael Ferry. Who, um, who fought on it? Uh, Michael Ferry uh, was fighting against Craig Amor. He won the UK title, Ben Uncle title for B-Bad about three weeks oh. ago. Um, Cena, man, Cena, he's a good, good prospect. Yeah. And I'm um, uh, think the whole thing. The only thing is, I again, so I uh, we we can't recognize it as a bare knuckle fight because they had hand wraps. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? And and that's us again. That's us too. That's not them. You know what I mean? Each yeah. their own. You know, but 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 see again, Sue. It's called BKB for a reason. It isn't that is knuckle boxing. Yeah, it's that's bare it. knuckle boxing. That's it. And you know what I mean? That's it. And and and. and that's how I, I look at it. But yeah, there's some good prospects. A lot of those guys look like they had a few amateur fights and maybe fight a little white collar boxing. Yep. But you know, um, um, the bare knuckle, the real bare knuckle, it's a little bit different game, too. Yeah. The the point I was going to make about Michael, um, again, he he lives comes from the same town as me. Um, I've done a couple of interviews with him, video interviews and radio interviews. He doesn't even have a Facebook account. He puts his love into training and he keeps away from all of that side of it. Who is this, Sue? I, I lost again. Who is this? Yeah, th this is Michael Ferry still that I'm talking about. Yeah, he doesn't oh, even yeah, have... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I, I hear he's a lovely young boy to talk to. No, I hear great things about him. I hear he's a gentleman now. Yeah, uh, he, he doesn't go in for all of this. He keeps completely off Facebook. And, I mean... In, in the UK sort of scene, he hasn't even really been tested at the moment. But the thing I like, he keeps away from all of that side of thing, all the slagging, well, I, all the calling I, names. I, I, I stay away. Um, uh, Stu, you wouldn't believe the silliness I've had. I've had death threats, pal, people threaten my family. Like, this and silliness. All that. I have a, a, a stalker over here in, in Ohio by the name of Rufus. I don't know the last name. We've, we've, and, to, we've, I mean, talk, we've I, talked about him um, in the past online. Um, and oh, it's terrible. A lot about exactly. Him. It's scary. It, oh, yes. Okay. And, and I thank the good Lord, my attorney is in contact with the prosecutor and Deputy Brenner, and they're, you know, we're pursuing the press charges. I mean, he's, every week he buries himself. Like last week, he said, I'm never going away, he says. I'm never going away. Yeah. I'll hurt you. I mean, that's, you shouldn't have to do with that, Stu, in this day and age. That's insanity, pal. You know what I mean? And, uh, it's so, crazy. Anyway, the good Lord, uh, my, my attorney's taking care of it. But what it is, Stu, 
when you put yourself in the limelight, you draw a lot of fools. And for some reason, I'm like a magnet for it. <laughs> <laughs> you could be right there. Um, you, you do certainly seem to, to attract sort of more than your fair attention to flack for some reason. Um, I'm, it, I, I, I'm, 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 you know, you, you know, they say Ken Shamrock's the most dangerous man. I'm the, I'm the world's most challenged man. <laughs> <laughs> I get challenged all the time. Yeah. Well, I spoke to Ken Shamrock uh, about six weeks ago for an interview, and I was speaking to him again on Tuesday. So um, I'll sit. I'll, I'll yeah, ask him Ken, about that. Ken, Ken's a good guy. He's a, he's a class act, and he's an athlete. A lot of people realize he had a lot of vertical fights growing up. People just say this is something new to him. Because he does MMA and yeah. he, you know he's an athlete. He, he, and I, I was talking to him, and he's really looking forward to fighting DTF and doing big things with DTF. He's a, yeah. he's a class act, and um, uh, I, w- I wish him all the luck in the world. He, he really is a nice guy. Yeah, he is. He's a gentleman. I mean, after we'd recorded the interview, we sat just chatting for quite a while, and he is. He's a nice man, and I say I'm interviewing him again on uh, on Tuesday coming. I believe in in the UK scene. Uh, you, you can just see like Jay Wong and Joe Joe Smith Brown. Them guys are, are going to make a big big difference in the UK. Yeah. And, and and once I only like I, I once they take their hand wraps off, it'll be home stretch. You know what I mean? They'll be yeah. like they'll be really making knocking walls down. And yeah. I think it's going to be great. And you got to you got at the end of the day, whatever business you're into, you got to be a decent person, right? And Joe is a decent person. He didn't look out for the guys and. And you're right, by him. He puts everybody first before himself. He's a good guy. Yeah, he does do that. He's. Uh, I mean, I was. I was having an interview with uh, one of Joe's fighters, um, Scott Midgley. Um, it was on last week's show. Well, this week's show. This just gone out. Yeah. And what, what he was saying yeah. about Joe is, he's the kind of man he'll always keep his promise, even if it leaves him out of pocket. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know. You know. I. I would say this to and and and. To a lot of people in clothes, and I would say this: that, that if you want to be a bare knuckle fighter, go prove yourself. Don't 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 knock people down that's above you and higher you because all that makes you look like a fool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Documentation beats conversation. Build yourself up, fight the right way, but don't go into bare knuckle fighting if you don't have any actual fighting experience. Yeah, I couldn't because agree one with day you more. you're going to meet a guy that you know you're going to meet a guy that knows what he's doing. Yeah, and it's going to hurt. You, you know, it, and that's the truth. You know, it's true, like my old dad always taught me, unless you have these fights and kill yourself and have all these fights, when you do fight a guy that can fight, you know, it's going to show the difference. And, 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 and to compete with these guys, you have to have a good pedigree. Yeah. You know what I mean, Stu? And, and a pedigree means a background. Definitely. Now, unfortunately, you, you get some of these guys that maybe had one or two street fights and maybe one or two amateur fights and... They want to go to the bare world, and I don't think it's the best place for them. Yeah, I would agree. I think it's a, I think, I think it's a sport for real, pure fighters. I, I think it takes something special to go into bare knuckle, most definitely. It does. You know what I mean? I, 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 Sue, it's always been good to me. I wish I could fight with the gloves like I do bare knuckle. I just feel so much safer at home with bare knuckle because, you know, Sue, the thought of controversy and corruption is not in the bare knuckle world. People don't understand the underground world. Is yeah. more fair and nicer people than me fighting in a world stage in front of fifty thousand people. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be it, a lot more. It, there'll it, be a lot more, a lot more honourable people there as well. I bet. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a nicer environment. Yeah. Um, another thing I was going to ask you, something I've always wondered, Bobby, when I've watched a lot of your fights on YouTube and things like that, you, you're really well known for fighting in jeans and cowboy boots. Do you feel that that type of dress restricts you in a, in a fight at all, or? Oh, no, no, I understand. Uh, in the underground fights, yeah, um, that, that's my trademark. Um, yeah. The blue jeans and a, and a black tank top. Yeah. And, and, and the reason why, oh, one second, so I'm just actually, my wife will I'll be in a, a few minutes, go and hear me. Uh, okay. I always, here's why, so here's why i done that, So An underground fight yeah. is not a, a safe environment. What I mean by that, at any moment, it could be raided, correct? It could be, you know, interrupted. And if, so, you're, and if, so, you're, if you're running around in boxing shorts, you're going to get caught very quickly. Exactly. So the reason why I fought with tank tops and jeans, yep. God forbid people did with it and come in, well, my crater slips on my coat and I look like everybody else there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's why I was my trademark. <laughs> there was a reason why, that's why I got it. And, yeah. and, and I, you know what I mean? But I mean, I'll tell you what, but I've seen some, 
some great underground fights over here in America. And, yeah. um, uh, and people are saying, like, it's a rich environment over here. Yeah. It's the same. Sue, America isn't better than, than Europe, England, UK. And UK isn't better. It's all the same. It's, we, all, we all put our pants on the same every morning. Yeah, Each one right. of us have a different culture change, but we basically do the same thing. Exactly. Okay? And, 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 and neither one of us can claim we're the best. We're the best bare knuckle. No, it's all the same. Just as much as BKB is in Europe, it's over here too. And it's been here for hundreds of years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's been great. The final, sort of qu final question I've got for you, Bobby. Um, looking at anyone, um, either past or present, living or dead, who would you most like to uh, to fight against if he was in the prime? So, what would you, you dream fight? If anyone who, in the world? Who would I like to fight the most? Is that you're asking who I want to fight right now? Uh, no, who would you like to fight the most? Um, no matter whether they're past or present, living or dead, if you could could have fought them in their prime, who would you most like to fight? Well, um, I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm a real fighter, and 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 as a fighter, I couldn't carry the legends as jock straps. So I'm not even going to go there. All I'm going to say <laughs> is that I want to fight. I want to fight Timber Slice. Yeah, Timber yeah. Slice. I will take him to deep water. <laughs> and I will show him stuff he's never seen before in his life. Yeah, and I will bust him out and and I'll. He's a big old ugly man, with a big old beard on him. But please, to jump off that beard, you know what I mean. So <laughs> I like to get him, I like to get him and smash him. I take him to school, and I'm going to show him the bull in the manicure. How to, he never even comprehend the pain that I can take him. And the yeah. guys that he fought, were just regular guys. He's never yeah. fought a top echelon guy. When he does, he gets beat. Yeah. So so Kimberly Slice, between me and you, has got the best name in bare knuckle boxing. Because of the markability on his name, you're gonna lighten her on for attention. So, there's two things there: it does great for the sport to make it mainstream. Yeah. But it also opens the world up to people to get more attracted to it and get into it. It does. It does. How do you think uh, Kimbo Slice will get on um, fighting Ken Shamrock? Um, I believe Shamrock will take him to the ground and tap him out. Yeah. You know, it's an MMA fight, right? It's just stand up. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You know I mean, um, so that's that's how I think of that. Um, I I I spoke to a very intelligent person, you know, and he told me that they're looking me and Kimball. We want to make the fight happen, and it's it, it's a bare knuckle super fight. Yeah. And we're talking right now to the attorneys and, and the team to make it happen. That that's the fight I want. It, 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 it it's not just a fantasy fight. It's, it's a reality fight for me. Yeah. And that's that's the fight I want. And, and mm -hmm. it, yeah, there's names out there. Yeah, I mean, there's some good names, but there's a lot of good names coming to bare knuckle boxing right now. That yeah. I can't believe right now, but there's former world boxing champions yeah. that are coming in. Mm. And this it, is, again, again, bare knuckle boxing is a different art than regular glove boxing. It'll be interesting to see how they mentally can toughen up to the bare fist combat to see how we do it. Yeah, I think there's a lot of intelligence in it in bare knuckle boxing as well. In a lot of, it's more of an, like you said, it's more of an art form. It's a, you're, you're a chess player. Yeah. In boxing, you're a checkers player. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the bottom line. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, makes, checkers, makes you're sense. more bolder. You, you're more bolder, the games are faster. In yeah. boxing, your hands are wrapped up, your hand wraps, you got gloves on, you punch faster, and it's like bare knuckle is like chess. You take your time. Pick your shots. You choose your move the right way. Yeah. Checkmate, and then boom, your fight's over. Fantastic. Well, that was excellent. Thank you so much uh, f for being on the show, Bobby. It's uh, it's been great to speak to you. Thank you, my pal. I really want to thank you so much, and I also want to say again to people that don't understand this. Um, um, again, when I'm back home in UK, I love everybody there. They treat me so fine. Yeah. And 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 all my mother's people come from Ireland, and my father's people come from Scotland. Okay. And all my answers are UK descendants, like you know, from 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 Europe, Europe descendants. Yeah. And I fight for you all. I'm not just representing one country. I'm representing the world in yeah. boxing, and I fight for you all. And I want the sport to be a recognized, respectful sport. I don't want it to be like again, Sue. Here's the bottom line. 
Yeah. If everybody can do it, then that means it's not that hard to do it, correct, Stu? Exactly. You know what I mean? So, so not anybody can be a bare knuckle fighter. Yeah. Not anybody. Not every tough guy would be bum brawler, street bum, can be a chess player. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. And unfortunately, this is what we're, the only thing that I'm doing, because of my great team we have behind us, you know, we have a great team and board members and, and people involved, they're, 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 they're making it hard. And also, you understand, know, we have strict medicals too. The yeah. fighters have to take head yeah. tests. Because, you know, unfortunately, I've seen in the past where literally people challenge people from the crowd to come yeah. out and fight the fighters in, in, their, in their pit. That's like a circus, something you see in 1930s. I mean, I mean, I mean there's, no, there's nothing, you know, so what I'm saying to you, this has to be done on a legitimate level, the same as professional boxing. You have to build yourself up, fight to the rounds, four rounder, six rounder, eight rounder, ten round main event fighter. Yeah. You have to build yourself up, and you have to go through medicals. You have to make sure you're healthy enough to fight. Make sure you're competitive because no way, shape, or form, we, we at BKF want to see anybody get hurt. Yeah, I think that's definitely the, the way. Day, so it, it's ultimately it's for the fighters. It's for the fighters to make money. People forget. Oh, you can say all you want. You can run anybody down you want. Yeah. Each one of these men competing have a little family at home. Exactly. And that's what's most important in life. That's it, my pal. And how do we want to send them home to their family? You know what I mean, Stu? Yeah. No, no money, beat to death, or do you want to make sure they love them? They're getting paid very good. And that's how it goes, Stu. Yeah, it definitely is. Well, that's fantastic. Again, thank you very much. Um, to everybody out there, um, don't forget, you can follow Bobby Gunn on Twitter at Real Bobby Gunn. And to find out more about Bobby, I'll post some links to my website uh, tonight, which is stuarmstrong.com. And don't forget to join me every Wednesday at 9pm for the Stu Armstrong interviews, bringing you the biggest and best in combat sports, each week exclusive to Radio Northumberland. Listen free online and worldwide at radionorthumberland.com. listening to radio for the most beautiful part of the world. This is Radio Northumberland. Stu Armstrong with interviews that pack a punch.